I want you all to close your eyes. Picture yourself sitting at the edge of a bed. Your whole life is about to change. The air that surrounds you is warm, yet the forecast keeps calling for winter time. You get dressed, but you feel as if nothing you put on is going to hide the monsters that have plagued you. For what you keep trying to lie to yourself has only been a few weeks, yet you know it has been years. There is going to be a funeral soon. Your dreams and aspirations will be in coffins. The terms in your vernacular will no longer carry a resemblance of the day before. You will only know there is something new to come. Now open your eyes. Hi, my name is Jasper Benitez. I am an FAU student. I am an Elite Owl Leadership and Service Ambassador. I am an FAU Red Jacket. But I am also something which not many people say proudly. I am diagnosed with bipolar disorder. The number of my disorder in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders is 296.64. Let me repeat that for you. 296. 0.64. Everything that I am, everything that I do could be attributed to one number that is five digits long. Yet this is not what happens. It is because all of my disorder leads to the way I am. I do not allow it to dictate who I am, nor my level of success. But before I explain to you how I've conquered my disorder, I must share with you the story of how I came to my diagnosis and the things I lost as a result of being diagnosed. Since I was a child, I knew I wanted to work in a profession that was tasked with serving the public in an honorable way. For a long time, I associated honor with danger and believed that becoming a police officer would fulfill my childhood desire. As I got older, I got closer to that dream. I earned A's and B's in my freshman year of classes received employment at my university's police department, enlisted in the Army National Guard, and networked in such ways that I was already receiving job offers from police departments across the country. But that would be short-lived. Soon everything I had worked for would be meaningless. The tides of my life were creating a shoreline that was impossible to reach. It was during my sophomore year of college where the division between what was and what would be began. That year is divided into two parts, fall and spring. And in those two parts comes two completely different lives. In fall of 2013, I began a relationship that changed the course of my life forever. I lived with her, and for a time, she was what healed me. But that would not be for long. Soon the end would come, and I would leave being told I had lied about who I am. I would leave in a car and end up on a bed with an IV attached to my arm and a family torn at the sentence they had avoided for years. This dramatic exit marks my entrance into a lifelong journey of recovery. On January 28th, 2014, I admitted myself to the Boca Raton Regional Hospital under what is known as a Baker Act. In order to do this, I had to answer yes to the following question. Are you suicidal? At the time, my suicidal feelings were not as potent as in times prior, but I knew this was the only way to receive immediate medical attention. So, with some hesitation still looming, I answered yes. And this led to my eventual transfer to the St. Mary's Mental Health Unit. During my 72 hours at St. Mary's, I came to terms with what I had done and all of the consequences it would bring. I came to accept that there was going to be a new way of life upon my release from the hospital and that I was going to have to adapt to it. I also came to understand that in this new way of life, there was going to be dreams, aspirations, and goals which I can no longer claim. Upon my release from the hospital, I took with me a stack of paperwork that highlighted my new life. On January 31st, 2014, I walked out of those hospital doors with bottles of prescription medication, 
doctor's appointments, and a laundry list of no mores. No more could I be a police officer. No more could I serve in the army. But nestled amongst those no mores, which I highly disliked, I found one that I treasured. No more would I suffer without a label. At least now when I suffered, it would have a name, bipolar disorder. I now had a label, although it seemed more like a sentence that was tailored to me. Bipolar disorder type one, mixed severe with psychotic features, also known as 296.64. These few words put together have changed the course of my life forever. And it is because of this that I believe in the importance of words. Words have the power to build or to destroy. Which one they achieve is dependent on the person speaking them into existence. This notion that the power of words lies in the mouth of a person is precisely what has paved my way to success. My success is possible because I chose to build with words rather than destroy. I chose to not allow these words that were spoken through neutral mouths to destroy me. They could have easily been the reason I stopped trying in life. After all, these few words put together had taken away my ability to achieve in success in the one field I wanted. I could have taken that as an indicator that it was only a matter of time before my disorder took away my ability to achieve another much wanted aspiration. Instead, I chose to build my life around these words. I chose to make these words the framework with which I built my life. I chose to make my disorder a lifelong partner in my quest for success. But in order for construction to be completed successfully and our partnership to work, I did have to understand five things. Number one, it does not stop existing. I understand that my disorder does not stop existing simply because I am not having an episode. Me feeling better does not mean I am cured and I can all, all of a sudden stop taking my medication. Recovery is a daily accomplishment which must be actively worked towards. I have to keep in mind that episodes can occur at a moment's notice. And this has led me to the finding that being cognizant of the fragility of stability is the best way to remain prepared. Number two, I must respect it. I constantly remind myself of my disorder's ability to destroy because maintaining a healthy respect for my disorder is crucial to successfully conquering life with it. I must remember that my disorder can cause me to suffer a great deal of pain when I am going through an episode. Remembering this ensures that I do not trigger an episode for foolish reasons that could have easily been avoided. Number three, I have limits. I acknowledge the limits that my disorder presents to my human experience. I then circumvent these limits by redirecting my focus to items in which my disorder does not limit me in. It is healthy to accept your limits and strive for items which you can actually accomplish. I do not allow myself to live believing that I am limitless, but I also do not allow my limits to dictate my level of success. Number four, my disorder is not an excuse. Although my behavior can be explained by my disorder, it is never okay for me to use my disorder as an excuse for my behavior. I must keep myself accountable for the ways I behave because my disorder does not give me the excuse to hurt myself or others. Number five, my mental health comes first. I have learned to live in a way in which I find the methods to leading a meaningful life, all the while keeping my mental health at the forefront of my decisions. I now put my mental health before anything that I want because there was a time when I did the reverse. It is because of that time and the damage it caused in my life that I have learned to realize that what I need is far more important than what I want. I must remind you there are two courses of actions you can take 
when you are diagnosed. Let it destroy you or use it to build your life. And if you are living with a mental health disorder, I now want to challenge you in four ways. I challenge you to not let it destroy you. I challenge you to make your disorder a lifelong partner. I challenge you to view your disorder and your limits as terms and conditions for your life. And finally, I challenge you to not let your disorder define the way you treat yourself or others. And if you remember just one thing from my story, let it be this. I am conquering life with bipolar disorder. Thank you.